Hello and welcome back to my Java tutorial series. You can see I'm already in Eclipse as always on our final project for last episode which was about conditionals and the like. Now I'm about to start up a new Java project for episode 5 which is going to be mainly about loops and also something I regrettably forgot in the last episode that's called a ternary operator. Now ternary operators are um, like also such as a, um, like a switch is also a condensed version of a if else uh, conditional but it's um, it's interesting and I unfortunately forget about them a lot but let's just dive straight into it and of course we'll just start with our public static avoid main string array now you guys know what an array is hopefully and there it is. Does that look easy? That's not easy. Okay, that's better. Okay, so the ternary operator that basically sets a value to something. So let's just make a static integer int 1. So, and we'll just make a boolean 2. Just for the heck of it. Yeah. Okay, we'll just set that to true, even though setting booleans to true and false is redundant, since you can just use true and false, but either way. So how a ternary operator works, it works um, normally when you're setting a variable, so int 1 equals bool1. Now you realize I started this with a boolean, and you can't convert integer to boolean, but what you do, a question mark and the two values you, you want to put to it. So I'll use 5, a colon, and a 10. So here's how the ternary operator works. You do it, you, it equals, you have a boolean value. So you, you could also use if 5 is less than 10. But normally it'd be variables that could be changing that you don't always know. So basically, it looks at this a variable. It looks at this boolean expression. If it equals true, it will set it to the first the left side of the colon and if this evaluates to false it'll use the right side so if we just do our normal print line stuff and we look at it it should equal five there now if we do greater than now it'll evaluate to false and we should get ten so that's the ternary operator very simple you know, set something to boolean, question mark, if true, colon, and if false, then of course, and every line with a semicolon. Now that we've got the ternary out of the way, we can move into the real object of this episode, which are loops. Loops are very important, especially if you want to sift through an array. So, just as an example, we'll do a static array of strings. And we'll just label it greetings and I'll just fill out this array real quick um, okay there's four simple English greetings so now what I'm first going to show you is a while loop, which actually we won't be using the array for, but you'll see what we're doing. So we'll do while in the parentheses, you would put a Boolean value. So while true, so basically a while loop. Oh, why is that having a problem? Oh, yeah. So um, what happens with the while loop? You in the parentheses, you put a Boolean value, and inside, whatever you put inside this block will keep repeating and repeating and repeating until this equals false. Obviously, that will never equal false, and this is dead code. So basically what's happened, so the whenever, the normal circumstance, sorry, for using while true is normally in game loops, but those are very basic ones. Normally you'll do a variable such as is running. But simply we'll do if, as long as int1 is less than 10. So how we're going to do this, we're going to first, we're going to, uh, well first we should 
do that later since right now int1 we haven't assigned it but we're gonna assign it here we'll just do so it's assigned here so basically this ternary operator will give will assign int1 5 so basically while int1 is less than 10 it'll print it out which right now it'll go on forever because right now we need to increment it so right now we'll do int1 plus plus which you know plus plus is the unary operator which increments it by one so if you run it down it'll do while so it, it checks it before it runs anything it checks it so hey int one is less than ten let's do this shit it increases it by one so now it'll equal six it prints it out and then it goes back and say hey this is uh, this is still true let's do it again go back hey this is still true then once we get it to where it equals ten it's like hey this is false Let's skip the entire loop and continue on the program. So what we should be printing out is uh, the integer 6 through 10. And there we go, 6 through 10. And this is just um, there. Comment that out. And, that, and yeah, so if we run it, it'll be nice even, 6 through 10. But now, if we do greater than, which of course it isn't, it, it'll skip the whole thing. It'll skip the whole thing here because it initiated and it was false. So something similar to a while loop is what we call a do while loop. Oh, thanks. So we can just do int 1 less than 10. So what happens in a normal while loop... Is that... Okay. So in a normal while loop, it checks the Boolean expression first. And if it is false, then it won't even bother doing it once. The do while loop, no matter what, it'll go through and do it once, and it checks the expression at the end. If it's false, it'll just continue. If it's true, it'll go back to the beginning. So right now, it should print out only um, it should print out six, and then not do anything else. Um, oh, one second. Reverse that again. Okay, it should print out six and nothing else because it was like, hey, let's go through this. Let's increase this to six. Let's print it out. I was like, hey, let's not do anything else because this is false. And we'll keep going. And then if we just do it less than, we should have the same exact result of 6 through 10. And we do. So the basic thing is here, you know, you get no matter what, it'll go through the code once, at the very least. Let's see if we can't make this a bit more. No, I like it that way. Yeah, I have a pretty interesting code style. But yeah, you can code however way you want. Does it really matter? And I'm just going to... do that because I don't want it going through once in our soon in heart and when we're working with the rest of our stuff either way don't worry about it um, okay so there's the while loop now the next one which of course every programmer finds invaluable would be the for loop now the for loop is a bit complicated I mean of course you'll get used to it and you'll be like wow that's the simplest thing but here we go in the for loop this is just the most basic one. You declare an integer. Um, um, normally, people use i. If you're working with a coordinate system, you'll do like x, y, z. But normally, it's i, j, k for 3. And then you can continue. And you normally set it to 0, and you use a semicolon inside. So first, you create an integer. You could also use a, um, a different integer. Like, you don't have to create one. You could just use, like, int 1 equals 0. And the next one is a boolean value, and you say while i is less than greeting, oh, that was weird, greetings dot length, semicolon, and then i plus plus. So basically first, you um, make a variable, you're going to be using, you set a variable, you put a boolean value, which greetings dot length returns the length of the array of greetings, which is four. So it'll, and that's me, and this just increments it. So what it does, um, it goes through. If I, if it checks it first, like in a normal while loop, so it checks it first, and then it goes through, then it goes back, then um, it goes back, increments, increments the I for you, and then um, goes back through again until this is, um, until this is true. I mean, um, until this is false. My apologies. So if we just did um, system dot out dot print line um, greetings and we call the 
index i in the array. So that means i increases every time. So for loops is like the optimum way to sift through an array. So that means it'll start at 0, it'll pronounce hi, it'll go back through, increment i to 1, then, and then since hello is the 1 index in the thing, so it'll sift through the whole array, so we should get all of the array. And we got 6 because... Why did we get 6? While integer 1 is greater than 10, integer 1 is never greater than 10. Um, either way. Well, I don't care. We'll just comment it out and worry about it later. So yeah, we get hi, hello, hola, good morning. So then if you just want a certain thing, you'll say if... We'll just put the case it real quick. If i equals equals, remember you use equals equals to check numbers instead of set them, as in to make it um, return a boolean. So if i equals 2, then you'll do that, else um, we don't care. So that means it should pronounce just ola, which is the 2 index in the array. So there we go, we got ola in the console. So that's the while, do while, and for loops. Now there's another thing we do, which is um, called branching statements that you can use inside loops. So let's say, um, now I guess we can also cover something else that I accidentally missed in arrays. That's called a multi-dimensional array, which is pretty simple. It just means you can put an array inside an array. It just means you put double brackets. Um, so that just means you put double brackets, so you can set it like this, I think. You might need a comma there, or you might just have to have it inside. Okay, you have to have it inside. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Kind of. <laughs> so let's just do... Maybe that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. That's a multi-dimensional array. It's an array that can hold arrays and other things. So, either way, let's get on with it. We can do that. And, oh, stupid. Sorry. Why is that there? I don't want that there. Okay, we can do that. Setting it full of stuff. So, that means we can just do... Um, by... Goodbye and farewell. Then we can do adios, ciao. Man, I should know how to spell this by now. That looks good enough. Adios, ciao, y, um, buenos tardes. Buenas tardes, lo siento. Buenas noches. Okay, it's good enough. So, this array is holding two arrays. So how we would do this to say, let's do a for loop. Farewells dot length, i plus plus. Then inside the for loop, we add another for loop where it would be integer j equals zero, j is less than farewells, zero, dot length, j plus plus, so that just accesses the array, and we'll do system dot out dot print line, of course, farewells, i, j, so that means, um, let's see what we get. We get everything. Everything in the arrays. In the arrays. We get we got Ola because of this. So I'll just comment that out again. So look, so let's just run it again to clear it up. Basically, what this for first of all, it sets this for loop, it equals zero. So right now we're sifting. So right now, this sifts through zero, which means it sifts through the first array in the array of arrays. Yeah, arrayception. So we sift. So right now, we're sifting through the the um, 
English farewells. So it goes through bye, goodbye, farewell. So this so this one sifts through the farewells in English. And yeah, so this one sifts through which array in the fair in the array of arrays it goes through, and this one sifts through the array in the array of arrays that this one picks. Yes, there's a lot of arrays going on in multi-dimensional arrays. I think theoretically you can make a multi-multi-dimensional array. Um, let's not try it right now. Um, you can try that on your own little job experiment. I digress. So then this is zero, then this goes through zero, one, two, then look, this is done. So this goes back, this goes to one, then again this goes to zero, one, two, through the Spanish farewells. And then of course it's done. But say, once you get a certain greeting, that um, you're done. You don't want to do anything else. So, if um, you print it, you um, print out everything except if um, i equals equals one. So if it does get to the Spanish array, then break. Well, this it should it might need a label. So it gets to adios, is what it does. So it, oh, I should put this um, beforehand. Sorry. Oh, I should have cut and not copied it. Okay, so now should not get to adios. There we go. And then if we get to, I think if we set this to, if j equals two. It might give us those. So yeah, it gives us the first two. So basically, break breaks out of the closest loop it's in. Right now, break is in this for loop, not this for loop. So what happens is i equals zero. This goes to one, and then it goes. This goes from zero to one, and then when it goes to two, instead of printing out the the second index on either of these, it breaks out of this for loop and just goes back to this for loop, which again increments into the next language. So if you wanted to break out of this completely, however, then what you could do is set a label here. And a label, let's just put um, sifter. You put the colon after it, and this means sifter. This is labeling this for loop as a sifter. And what we can do, we can say break sifter. So that means when it breaks, it'll look for a sifter label and this is the label and this doesn't have to be sif sifter it could be like anything but I'm calling it sifter for logic's sake so that means this for loop is with is attached to the label sifter so this will break out of whatever loop it is that's labeled sifter so it should only print bye and goodbye and then it'll break out of this um, in-depth for loop and and you real and you'll remember that we used breaks and switches so you can it breaks up more uses than just that. Another thing, ugh, excuse me. Another thing you can do um, is a return. Is ret well before we get to return, let's uh, do cur uh, continue. So basically, if we do uh, j equals two, we can do continue. What continue does it. Um, just skips the current iteration of the loop. So if we did j equals equals one continue, it should just skip. It should do bye, then farewell. Completely skip goodbye. So basically, it's in this for loop. What it'll do is, when j equals one, just like skip to like right here, right before the end bracket. So then it'll go back through this group and increment. So it skips whatever's after the continue and just reiterates the innermost loop. So, you know, that's why it prints out uh, farewell zero. If, fare, if it's farewell one, they completely reiterate it, then it goes to farewell two, which is farewell. Now, we can also do a label with here. So, we can do continue sifter, which means when this is done, it'll continue. You do the same effect, ex uh, except only with the um, loop it's attached to with the label. So, we'll get by and adios. So, that means, you know, this equals zero, this equals zero, then when this equals one, it goes back here, this will equal one, this will equal zero, then when it equals one, it goes through here, I reached farewells.length, and it just exits. So that's use of continue. Then the next thing is return. I'm just going to bring this back real quick, you see if we do it, 
it'll print out a six. Just so another thing we can do is return. Now return, we're going to be using a lot eventually, but return is normally used to return values when the method it's in returns a value. You'll see that one of the identifiers in the public static void main, it's void. That means it returns void, which void is nothing. So this means this method returns nothing when you call it from somewhere else. Again, after this episode, we're going to go this um, next weekend, I'm probably just going to be making videos all about the concepts of object-oriented programming languages and more of the structure of Java as opposed to um, coding and such. But if we hit return, then it should, as soon as that equals 1, it completely exits the method. So we'll get only by. So when this equals 1, it'll return, which means re you can't use a uh, empty return when the, it's actually supposed to return something. You'll have to do like return null if it's returning an object or something else if it's returning a primitive type. But basically, as soon as this equals 1 for the first time, it doesn't care. It'll break out of this whole entire method because it can do that. And that's the power of return. So I think that's it for this episode. I have no idea how long it is. It might be longer than 20 minutes. It feels long. But I hope you enjoyed learning about all these loops. The ternary operator I forgot, which is really useful that I forget too much when I'm coding. It's useful. And of course, the um, branching statements along with the for loop. And you can use all these branching statements. You can use them in if. You can use them in conditionals. You can use them in for loops, while loops loops, do while loops, all those stuff. So, yes, I hope you enjoyed this episode again, and I will see you next time when we go into concepts of object-oriented programming languages.